Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, president of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to go over our new free script for After Effects called the SRT Importer. Now, what this lets you do is use After Effects to create your captions or subtitles. And this allows you to do a little bit more interesting design work than you'd be able to do in Premiere by itself. Of course, if you just want to have subtitles within After Effects for something you're working on, the transcriptive SRT importer is a great way of doing that. But what we really designed it for is all of the transcriptive users that are using Premiere and want more interesting subtitles than they can get out of the Premiere caption panel. And so that's what we're going to show you today in this tutorial and just give you a quick overview of what we're going for here. You can see that we've got some pretty interesting subtitles here, a cool lower third, a font that we've selected, and all this is coming out of After Effects. And we're going to show you how to use the transcriptive SRT importer with dynamic link in After Effects and also as a motion graphic template. Now I keep calling it the transcriptive SRT importer because it came about because of the transcriptive users we have that were asking for it, but it will work with any SRT. It doesn't matter what application or service it's coming from. SRTs are pretty standard formats. All right, so let's dive into it. Let's jump back over to After Effects and we will start from scratch. We'll grab our comp one here. Now, the first thing you wanna do is go up to window and select the transcriptive SRT importer. And that will open it up in a panel over here. You want the settings here to match your sequence in Premiere. So in this case, we have the frame rate set to 29.97, the resolution set to standard HD, pixel ratio, uh, the positioning of the subtitles, the opacity. Uh, if you want them to look like traditional captions, uh, you can also include a background rectangle, just a black background rectangle as you might be used to seeing uh, just for your standard 608 or 708 captions. But that's really all there is to it. And once you have that set up, you click on select SRT and create captions. And this will bring up a file dialog and you can select the SRT file that you wanna use. In this case, called the second arrow eight minute SRT. And we'll open that and the cool thing you're gonna notice is that it creates a comp with the caption name in it. So it'll name it captions and the name of the file. So it makes it really easy to identify. And then you can come down here to the composition it created and you can see our subtitles right there. Now, of course, at this point, you can come into the character palette and maybe you don't want Comic Sans for your subtitles. Uh, but if we want to do it with something else, uh, we'll say, let's grab Futura. Uh, we don't want condensed medium. We want medium. And so Futura is a font I like a lot. So that's what we're going to use. And if you have like, say a style guide that dictates what font the subtitle should be in, that's one of the great reasons for using the SRT importer and doing everything in After Effects. Now, if you just want standard captions, this is really all you need to do. You can now save out this After Effects project file, pull that into Premiere via dynamic link, and you've got subtitles that were created in After Effects. Now I should point out that this only works for uh, burned in subtitles. It's not gonna work for 608 or 708 captions. But with so many people using YouTube and Facebook, uh, which has burned in captions, we're seeing a lot of companies having style guides dictating what those captions should look like. Uh, since you can be a lot more creative than you can with standard, than you can be with standard over the air captions, uh, 608 or 708 captions, which have a set font and formatting and all that stuff. That's the easy way. Just save out the After Effects project file, import that into Premiere and you're good to go. But what if we want to do something more interesting? Well, we can do that. So let's uh, go over and open up this pre-made composition that I already have. And the other way to do this is to create a motion graphics template using the essential graphics panel. So going the motion graphics template route is super useful if you have the design and editing 
work being done by different people. So if you're in a large company, you've got After Effects users doing some of the design work, handing that off to the editors using Premiere, and neither group really gets into the other's territory. And I'll show exactly how this works in a second, but if you're just doing it all by yourself, then probably the easiest way is to use Dynamic Link. But for organizations that have the work divided up and you don't really want the video editors going into After Effects, motion graphic templates are a really great way of dealing with that workflow. And the way the motion graphics templates work is you give it a name and then you put in here the parameters that you want the editor to be able to adjust. Now, not all parameters are adjustable, but the opacity is. So we can just grab the text opacity and drop that into the essential graphics panel. We can grab the opacity for the lower third. And you can see that I've created this nifty lower third. If we scrub through this, you can see that it's very electric lightning background. And the motion graphics template is gonna save all this stuff out along with the text and the editor is going to be able to adjust the opacity of both of these elements, but that's really all they'll be able to do. So let's export this out. That's great, let's save it out. And now let's jump back over to Premiere. We can start with a sequence that does not have captions in it. And you're like, I've got this great transcript for my video, but I want to save it out as an SRT file and transcriptive, we would just export, select SRT, save that out. This is what we would bring into After Effects. But that's not what we want to do right now. Right now, what we want to do is add this in. So the first way to do this would be to use Dynamic Link, import the After Effects project, tell it what composition that we want to use. We'll select this one. And now we can go ahead and just drop that in there. So that looks great. That's exactly what we want. And if we're doing all the work and we have access to After Effects and Premiere, then this is probably the way to go. Because what's going to happen is if you want to make any changes here, either to the background or to the, or the way the text looks, you can just jump back over to After Effects, make those changes, and Dynamic Link will allow it to be automatically updated in Premiere. So that's a very cool way of working if you're the one doing all the work. Now, if you're not the one doing all the work and the designers just want to hand off a very easy file for the editors to use, again, creating that motion graphics template, the editor can go up to the essential graphics panel. They can do a search for second, for second arrow, which is what we called it. And there we have it right in the essential graphics panel. We drag that into the sequence. And again, you get the same thing. And you'll see that if I go up to edit here and select the second arrow template, you can see that I can make opacity changes to both of these elements. And you'll remember back in After Effects, we assign those two parameters to the template. And so there they are in Premiere working just as they should. And that lets the editor make a few basic changes, but they don't have access to everything. They don't need the After Effects project. And so again, if you're just handing something off to somebody, this is a great way of doing it. So two different cool workflows, both of which work great and helps you get a little bit more interesting subtitles and captions. And so then when you render it out, these are what your captions are gonna look like. Again, if we go to captions here, they're not gonna be there. These are not regular Premiere captions. These are subtitles that we are expecting to burn in, but it's not traditional caption data. But this is something that we've had a lot of requests for. There's a lot of people using After Effects to create their subtitles. And so hopefully this will be a pretty useful thing for a lot of you. And again, it's sort of designed to work with transcriptive, but of course it'll work with any SRT file Again, this is a free script for After Effects called the Transcriptive SRT Importer. And you can download it on digitalanarchy.com. You can go over to the Digital Anarchy website, go to plugins, go to free, click on free. And there it is, along with all of our other free plugins. Oops. Along with all of our other free plugins, uh, our regular paid plugins as well. Lots of cool stuff besides Transcriptive, Beauty Box. But if you go to the free plugins, 
Uh, you'll see the After Effects importer there. Just click on that, go to the registration page and register for it and we will send you a link. So thanks again for joining me. Head on over to Digital Anarchy. Uh, as you just saw, we've got lots of other great plugins, lots of tutorials, lots of other really cool, interesting stuff. So check it out and uh, hopefully we will see you in the next tutorial.